hello guys welcome to another video and we're going to just try and perhaps work on another paper the most recent which is the trial paper from the free state it's a pity though I looked at this paper and there are some missing questions here but nonetheless we're just going to get to the question paper and see what those guys got tested on. The only reason why I'm focusing so much on these recent papers is purely on the basis that this um, trial exam is perhaps going to have a major influence on the type of questions and the level of those questions for your finals. So without wasting too much time, let's just look into it and see what we can do about it. All right. Of course, um, I will try to do as much of this paper as possible <clears throat> so that um, we can just find every single piece of this in one video. But of course, for those who are concerned about uh, their data and that they're unable to kind of you know, do the whole thing, I will break it up into chapters, so to speak, and then just check in the description box where is the question that you want in terms of the timestamps and then you'll be able to just go there. The advantage is that even if you have small data or little data the good thing is that um, YouTube at this point is not like back in the days where it had to download the entire thing before it can play it. This time it plays as it downloads it so you'll probably not have so much of a big problem. Alright guys, um, let's look at question one from the Freistat and see what they were doing. It says the table below shows the distances in centimeters of the best attempts of 11 long jump athletes during an athletic event. Okay, so I used to do long, I mean, yeah, was it long jump? I did long jump at school and high jump, yeah, tried to run a bit, but yeah. I uh, only made it to regionals and because of some challenges not necessarily because of performance of course but yeah couldn't go further so it's a spot I know very well okay we can see the the first jumper or whoever this one is but let's first this is two three three in increasing order four four in increasing order five increasing like that so it's ordered so this is good it's not haphazard because when it's ordered it makes a bit uh, it makes life a bit easier to deal with. So here you have a univariate data, so to speak. All right, uh, so it says now calculate the range of the data. So always when you are asked such a question, you have to look in terms of the minimum, which is the smallest value, versus the maximum, which is the biggest value. So when it is ordered like that, it's even easier. So they made it a bit easy for these guys, otherwise they could have made it horrible. So here we're not going to waste too much time guys doing unnecessary things here. So we'll just run into it. So 1.1, we have 1.1.1. So the range is equal to the maximum minus the minimum, okay? But of course, write this in full. I don't know if it is necessary, but it doesn't really matter. At this point, we have 685 as our maximum on our data and 287. So let's do the calculation. <coughs> okay, minus 287. I'm getting 398. 398. Of course, what was that? That was centimeters because they told us that this thing is in centimeters. Of course, is it really necessary? I don't know, but yeah. So the range is a range of 398 centimeters, so to speak. Okay, not a problem. How many marks? Just one mark. Okay, not a big deal. So 1.1.2. Next question is asking. Um, calculate the mean distance of the athlete's best attempts. Okay, the mean, <coughs> so the mean 
you simply garden by adding all those up and then of course dividing by their total number that will give us the mean okay it's not a big deal so well we know that our mean is going to be the sum of all these x values and their frequencies divided by their number okay so what was that so we got 287 plus 3 Two eight plus four eight six. I mean, there's going to be too many here. So until the last one, which is six eight five. So you have a technique that you learned in sequences and series. So this is a series. So you can just forget about the middle. But how many are they? One two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven. So they are eleven. Okay, so this is simple. So just add all of them up. So this is 287 plus 3, <coughs> 288 plus 3, 583 plus 601 plus 619 plus 685 all right so I'm getting 5478 all of that over 11 then we we'll do that I'm getting 498 okay not a problem so the mean is 498 centimeters basically all right not a big deal so two marks I believe if you think about it the substitution and that answer probably this is where those marks are sitting 1.1.3 so what do they want they're saying that the standard deviation of the data above of course the standard deviation is a bit lengthy if you do it the physical way there is a way of course you can deal with that but let's rather go to our calculator mode go to stats which is three then we go to one variable which is one and then there we are we have our nice table there so we're going to put two eight seven then press an equal sign it locks it on 328 locks it on 374 in 486 of course yeah you just have to be careful 492 then 501 just double check that you are entering this correctly or else you are going to be in some situation 583 you don't want to be in a situation okay you want to be in a position <laughs> not a situation that makes any sense at all 685 so I mean I have 11 data points here so I'm sh I should be okay so you just hit the AC button it stores that thing then you go to shift then you go to first button there then you know that you want the variable or variance which is 4 then there is our thingy there so we wanted our standard deviation you could even do the mean here because option 2 is the mean but we're interested in option 3 at this point so that is the standard deviation so we press a 3 and then it gives us um, that our standard deviation is going to be 119,47 of course uh, that is in centimeters of course I mean here we're dealing with measurement so we can do that I don't know if there, there's a is there 
Yeah, I mean, it's the distance between the variables and the mean, isn't it? Between each variable and the mean, of course, the average of that. So, yeah, that should be that. That should be that. So, they're giving us only one mark, okay? We take the marks and we smile, okay? Uh, you could also do the mean on this one. I mean, if you go shift before I wrap it off and then you go to stat if you didn't do it. So, you can go to option 4 which is the variance and then there is your x bar there it means this the, the mean if you pressed the mean there you got your 498 so you could easily do that as well uh, that is why it helps to scheme and scan those questions so that you know what you need to do otherwise if you do not do that then you sometimes don't know which technique is going to help you because I mean for these two you could have easily done them from the same framework instead of doing this long calculation you could have taken that time to punch this into your calculator then you get your values and then you move on all right so not a big deal question says now determine how many distances lie outside one standard deviation from the mean best attempt okay show all your calculations of course one standard deviation okay so you always regard that I mean these are the measurements of dispersion and isn't it around the mean so let's look at this one um, 1.2 all we know is that um, one okay now we have to think about uh, below and above the mean so if we have our mean here as uh, say I don't know they said show all your calculations okay so we can say one standard deviation above the mean is going to be the mean itself plus the standard deviation, right? Which is going to be, what was the mean? We got 498. Then we're going to add our standard deviation. Ooh, that is 47. I don't know what I was trying to write there. So we have 498 plus 119.47, right? So I'm getting 61,47. And then, of course, if you are to round off this thing to one decimal place, it's as good as 417, right? Right. And then again, one standard deviation below the mean is going to be our mean here uh, minus the standard deviation, okay? So which is going to be 498 minus 119, and as it turns in terms of my put, 11947. So let's go 498 minus 119,47. Uh, I'm getting 378,53. Of course, to no decimal place is 79, right? Right. So what are we going to do about this situation? We can decide now that we want values that are either below this number or above this number okay so these are the numbers that we're going to use for our reference now if you look in our data set here this is 378,5 which is roughly 379 so where is that we see up to 74 and then 400 so do you see all these values all of these values lie below one standard deviation of the mean right right so we have three data values here and then we're looking for the upper limit which is 417 so 417 gives us how many values here wait a minute 617 be careful here 617 okay which is roughly 617 so 601 is out 617 617 so do you see that these data values or data points lie one standard deviation above the mean 
so in total we have 5 so we can say therefore we have 5 um, distances outside uh, 1 standard deviation from the mean okay I mean I'm just being a lot more complicated at this point but yeah I don't know if it is necessary to really list those values perhaps it is important but I think the question is three marks so they said show the calculations I think that calculation and this calculation and the answer is important uh, if you have to list them I doubt so but you can list them if you want so that is how you get your three marks over there okay guys we we'll just keep it going all right so there's a question here 1.3 they're saying unfortunately the official incorrectly measured the distances of the long jump athletes he measured y centimeters short from the correct measuring mark hence all distances measured were y centimeter shorter so we have this value that was missing then it was supposed to be this scenario is shown in the diagram so they are showing us that they were supposed to measure from here to there instead someone measured from here to there okay not a problem so that explains it all i'm not going to go into that when the correction is made to the distances the sum of the athletes best jump is now remember now this is the total of our data points meaning they are no longer going to be this total that we got here they're not going to be five five four seven eight ne? but they're going to be a little bit less than that i mean more than that which is uh five 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 okay not a problem and then they're showing you the sum in sigma notation i mean this shouldn't scare you you already know it from sequences in series now after the corrections were made write down the standard deviation of the new data of course everything has been moved that means even the mean is going to be moved y units up so the standard deviation won't change it's going to be the same so hence it's only one mark so we have 1.3 here 1.3.1 so i mean the standard deviation remains the same um, which is 119 comma for seven centimeters because nothing is going to change I mean everything is going to change by seven including that very initial mean so that means the distance will pretty much be the same okay so that shouldn't be a problem so you get your mark I mean they're just giving you free marks here what are they doing now they're saying um, the median of the new data now that becomes a bit of a situation but think about it what was the median when you have 11 data points the middle value or the middle point is where you want to be so we have one two three four five of course we're going to have one two three four five wait one two three four five one two three four five so this means this is our middle point remember median is the middle value of ordered data okay not a problem so this middle value we just have to add y that's all we need to do okay then we will have our new thing but now how do we do that well we'll start by doing it this way 1.3.2 we know that we had 11 data points here okay so now there's going to be 11 y so we lost 11 y plus the initial which was 5 Four, seven, eight. Ne? That's all we needed. So we're only going to add eleven y to this number and keep and get us the new number, which is quadruple five. All right, not a big deal. So what are we going to do here? So we know that our eleven y is going to be five, 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 five minus five, four, seven, eight. Okay, let's do that. So. Five five 
five five minus five four seven eight is 77 so I have 77 and 11 y there therefore our y is going to be the division thereof which is just 7 okay so we lost 7 centimeters in there so we can say therefore our median is going to be our old median plus 7 what was our old median is 501 plus 7, which is going to be 508 centimeters. Great stuff. So that was a bit nice, I think, because it looked a bit more mathematics than, you know, pure statistics. You had to use a bit of your algebraic techniques there to get things done. It's funny though that it's just three marks anyway, so you're getting the marks here and there. Um, I don't know man, where's the third mark? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there's a lot to consider really, but perhaps that substitution maybe. The rest they don't care, I mean maybe you can push one mark into that, it's still okay. Not a big deal. So this is how you would score these 11 marks in this question. Okay, I hope that wasn't um, unclear. So we will keep it moving, guys. So just be open to any type of questioning, but maintain what is known, because I think that is what makes the difference. The rest is not really that much important. Okay guys, now we are into analytical geometry, so we have to analyze. We are analysts, are we not? Yes, we are. We have analyzed a lot of things already, so let's, let's do the analysis. Okay, so question three says in the diagram, A, B, C, and D, we are given the coordinates of D, it is a point minus eight is to five. A vertices of a cyclic quadrilateral. Okay, that means there is a circle passing through the vertices of this um, thingy here. Okay, not a problem. All right, so again, you want to revise properties of a cyclic quad here. You don't see any one side of the cyclic quad produced, so to speak. So you can't have an exterior angle of a cyclic quad considered here. Uh, you don't have this bow tie like situation happening unless it is forced so you're not gonna have angles in the same segment but what do we have here we are given one angle here of course I didn't read the whole story now if we're given one angle that means we can determine that angle from opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary that's if they will need us to calculate that or if that can be an intermediate step all right, ED is drawn with E, minus 11 is to zero. Okay, there it is. Uh, G and F are points on ED and EA respectively, such that GF is parallel to, e, to DA, so it's indicated. H, which is a point, minus eight is to one, is a point on GF, okay? There it is. That is our H over there. EG equals ED. Okay, that is indicated. EG equals, sorry, did I say EG? GD, yeah, GD, not ED. And DCB is 71,57 degrees, so that is indicated. So we know that if we ever need anything that involves this angle, we have opposite angles of a cyclic quad being supplementary. So keep that in mind. So what can we do with what we are provided? Look, we have got two points on this line, ED. And of course, if we've got those points, we can determine the coordinates of G, the midpoint, using our midpoint, our midpoint formulas there, our expressions. And then we can also do the gradient of that line. That means from doing that, we can even calculate the equation of that line. All right, not a problem. Two, what else can we do? Well, if we determine the coordinates of G, we can essentially find the gradient of GF 
because GF is essentially I mean F, H and G are collinear points they lie on the same straight line so the gradient between any two points is consistent all right so we can find the gradient of that line essentially we can determine the equation because of a point through which this line passes and on top of that we can determine its x-intercept which is f so this is what we can do all right um, we, that means we can find the coordinates at f2 if we find the gradient of gf since it is parallel to da that means we can say parallel lines have equal gradient so we essentially have the gradient of da knowing a point on da we can actually determine the equation of that point of that line and we can also then determine its x-intercept which is the coordinates of a all right not a problem is there more we can do at this point doesn't look like there is more that we can do all right um yeah it doesn't look like there's more but in case we are to look for the equation of a b for example knowing that we can determine this angle we have the gradient of this line so we can actually find its angle of inclination by looking at that positive angle there and then on top of that we use opposite angles of a cyclic quad being supplementary we can get this point here that means this whole angle minus this one can leave us this angle here which maybe we can call theta this one and then of course that whole big one here which is that of inclination of that we can call this one beta and then we know that beta minus this angle here with the asterisk will give us theta and if we have theta we can have the gradient of this line and knowing that we could calculate this point from this equation that we can determine the we can actually find the equation of a b okay so again guys um this is something you want to accustom yourself with because questions can trick you and if you don't have a plan you'll always get stuck because once they start asking a question that needs you to think then you will not have enough time to allow your brain to, to to explore these options so it's always wise to have a look at least quickly work out what you can do and what you cannot do but of course don't sit here and think if it doesn't come quickly let the questions guide you but if everything comes quickly as you look at your sketch make sure you have that in mind because at times it may be a means to an end it can be a part of an intermediate step or a plan to answer another question that is maybe technical but the idea is you don't want to, st to feel that a question is too difficult to get to but all you have to do is to develop an approach again in the exam there's no point in trying to do all of this stuff and waste your time you can jump in but your brain is already accustomed to thinking outside the box all right so i always advise you to at least skim the diagram and see how quickly you can do certain things even though you know that you haven't read the questions then after that look at the questions and start to see how many questions you can actually answer because you also want to determine that you don't want to waste time on other questions that are probably becoming a bit challenging you just want to answer as many of those that you can quickly and move on all right so let's see question 3.1 says calculate okay this time they're saying calculate so you have to show a calculation the coordinates of g that's the midpoint. point okay uh, i'm already trying to write with the wrong pen a wrong pen the problem is visibility with these ones that's why i'm using these colored pens it's so very difficult to get these things to be visible when it's a fine pen camera likes to blink a lot and then this whole thing becomes blurry okay so we know that g is going to be the point where we have x at e plus x at d over 2 is 2 y at e plus y at d over 2 Okay, which implies that g is going to be we substitute this time x at e is minus 11 uh, minus 8 over 2 is 2 
0 plus 5 over 2 great stuff therefore G is that point I'm not gonna break my brain anymore I'm tired it's early in the morning it's minus 11 minus 8 is minus 19 divided by 2 it's just 19 over 2 so it's minus 19 over 2 you leave it like that or else you're gonna have a few problems but I mean that's minus 9 comma 5 so it's not a big deal and then here it's clear that it's either 2 comma 5 or you just write 5 over 2 let's just leave it as fractions like that so I think that is a bit easy so we can leave it at that and what can we do about this we can find the gradient of gf because of this point so yeah so i mean correct substitution and the answer is usually the standard way of dealing with a two mark question and then of course to some extent a certain postulation or formula may be considered for a three mark question but a four mark question is a bit more complicated okay it's complicated so let's look at this one it's they want the gradient of gf do you see now all of the things you worked out in your mind i mean by looking at the sketch are coming to you and you already know what you needed and in fact they guided you already they could have easily said just find the gradient and then you would know that your intermediate step is to get that point first so you see even difficult questions are not really out of reach it's just that they leave you with some intermediate step not stated but you have to find it otherwise they can guide you to just try and give you some more marks okay that was point one i don't know why i didn't label that correctly 3.1.2 okay let's not get too relaxed okay now the gradient this one is a small letter m normally but i don't know my pen is not the best okay of g f is going to be y at f all right no 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 y okay let's just first say this properly you see now i hate this this is what I hate is going to be equal to the gradient of actually GH okay maybe it's 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 important to state that because if they say GF and then you end up with GH what is the story you want to demonstrate that you understand you can say um, G H and F are collinear how do you write Collini? Is it like this? I think so. Ah, the spelling is not really an issue so far. <laughs> Which is going to be now y at say h minus y at g divided by x at h minus x at g. Then we substitute. What is y at h is 1 minus y at g is 5 over 2 okay that one divide by the x at h is minus 8 then minus minus okay so it's gonna be minus minus gonna be plus 19 over 2 here you don't want to really waste your time trying to work this out as fractions and all that just put it you have fancy calculators at this point so you just want to deal with that easily don't complicate your life at this point just make sure that whatever you put in is correct otherwise if you put in wrong values and you put wrong signs then there's going to be tears other than that you have enough solution here otherwise you don't want to waste your time so this is minus one so this is cool okay so that was the answer because they wanted the gradient right so again they're giving you just two marks so correct substitution and the answer is what you take and run with okay now the next question says 
determine the equation of AD in the form y equals mx plus c. Okay, so what the equation of AD? Remember, we said parallel lines have equal gradients. So, yeah, boy, this is so great. So, 3.2, you start off by saying the gradient of AD is equal to the gradient of GF. Now, what is the story here? These are parallel lines. Okay, parallel lines have equal gradients. You don't have to explain further than that. But remember, don't think this is not necessary because you are not doing, you know, Euclidean geometry this time. Remember, they said everything you used to determine your answers, be it a diagram, sketch, graph, whatever you did, because they know certain aids is what you know, but if you just do it without expressing it, then they don't know how you got your answers. The answer may be correct, but we still need to know where did you get it from. So anything, even there's an etc, that etc absolutely means any means possible to do that calculation is acceptable as long as you show it, okay? may not even be in the memo. It doesn't have to be in the memo for it to be correct. But if it is mathematical, it satisfies the three categories, whether it's algebra or arithmetic or geometric, you know, inclination, all of those things are acceptable. Okay. Oh, all right. I hope that is clear, guys. So therefore, our gradient of AD is minus 1. Okay, it's a negative gradient, so it's okay. So we can say this implies that line AD. I mean, you can just write AD with a little bar on top. That means line is such that Y equals minus X plus C. Okay, you don't write minus 1X. Okay, then you have a point D through point D, which is minus 8 and 5. We know that 5 is going to be minus into minus 8 plus C. Therefore, our C is, this is plus 8. When it goes to the other side, it becomes minus 8. Ne. So, uh, minus 8 plus 5 is minus 3. And you can tell that, well, this line really would extend further down. So, it would cut some way. So that telling us that that would be minus 3. So it's okay. Therefore, y is equal to minus x minus 3. That is what we need to, to determine. All right. Great stuff. How many marks were they giving here? Three marks. This is really a four mark question, though. Because to state that this is the story, and I think the most powerful is actually that statement than the actual answer. And then, of course, finding the C is quite critical, and then getting the equation, which is not too bad. Not too bad at all. All right, let's not put it away so that we can use it for reference. So you see, you can really thrive in these exams. I mean, these exams are easy, guys. I, I don't want to lie to you. These things are easy. It's just a matter of preparedness and how much you love your subject. If you really love your subject, you'll explore it and you'll make sure you know it well. But then if you want to abuse and use your subject, then it's always going to do a number on you, right? Because I know we have dreams. I want to become a doctor, I want to become an, an astronomer, I want to become a pilot, whatever. And then it will require me to do certain subjects. But if you're going to use those subjects just to get to that desire only, but you're not going to love the subjects as well and appreciate their value, then you're not going to make a very good one of whatever kind you want because at the end of the day, you need this understanding to get there safely. And then, of course, um, if you love your subject, you're going to make sure it irritates you not knowing them well. And when you know enough, then you move on. You move on so you need to know enough guys to, to do better but if you just don't know enough you might do well but not better 
may not excel. And nowadays it's very difficult to get into these careers if you don't excel because they take the cream of the crop first. And if that be a number of people, then that means you are done. You're not going to be taken. They don't want that to happen. So that's why you have to overly achieve already right now. And this is the way you go about it. You work your magic. Okay, they want the length of AE. Length of AE. And you can tell now, we are forced to actually calculate the coordinates of A indirectly because we won't be able to do that length if we don't know the coordinates of A. But since AE is a horizontal line, so it's going to be effectively an X coordinate here minus an X coordinate there or an X coordinate there minus an X coordinate here. But it's the X coordinate, so you don't need the distance formula here. Okay, so we can say A is an X intercept of line AD such that we know for a fact that 0 is going to be equal to minus x minus 3, right? Therefore, x is going to be minus 3. Alright, so this is, the, this is the good thing. And therefore, a is the point minus 3 is to 0. So it's very important to, to do these things. I, I know could have said which implies that, 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 that. But I mean, this is implied. If I say it's an x-intercept of line AD, I already know that y should be 0. And then I'm looking for x. And then I worked it out. And then I have my coordinates there. So it follows that. AD, sorry, AE is going to be an X coordinate at, say, E minus an X coordinate at A. Again, this is a horizontal line. That's why I'm doing that. I'm not even going to bother doing the distance formula. So, what is the X coordinate at E? It's minus 11 minus into minus 3. Of course, don't worry about the signs for distance at the end of the day. So, what we're going to have is minus 11 plus 3, which is going to be minus 8. Therefore, AE is going to be 8 units. You take the absolute value of that calculation. Okay. Or you could try to manufacture a positive sign by actually taking the point A as your first point because then you'll have a smaller number with a negative sign and the bigger number with a positive sign which will effectively give you a positive sign but it really does not matter as long as you keep in mind that distance should be um, distance should be a positive thingy. So here you're getting a mark for this two car. All of your workings, they're not interested in giving you marks for it, but they still want to see it. It's part of the calculation, isn't it? Yeah, boo. Okay, three point, sorry, 3.3.2. Calculate the area of trapezium ADGF. So A, ADGF, so okay so now for us to do that we're going to need to work our magic as always let me try, try and get some stuff that can help us to work our way towards ensuring that we get our marks there so now we want this geometric figure over there okay that's what we want but now we have a few challenges we don't know of course we can calculate the x coordinate at f but look at the marks for a guidance it's just four marks we could calculate the coordinates of f right from determining an equation of this line which we did not already do so is you going to need more we'll need an equation 
then get the x coordinate there and then once we get the x coordinate here then we can do the distance formula to calculate the length and then again we do the same here we calculate the length but then this will also force us to find the perpendicular distance between these two lines like that meaning from that point we would need to determine a perpendicular line like that and then that perpendicular line would effectively give us the height but now remember to do that we're going to have to use this gradient and then we use this line as well it's gonna be difficult ne? because we're going to use the gradient of this line to relate it to this one and then of course solve for that x so it's gonna be a bit of a tedious thingy you'd be like working for 10 marks for just four marks so let's try and find an easier way how would we do this one well we already determined the coordinates of a we found that this is minus three and zero okay so we already know a so how about we look at this in this manner we're well, like fine why don't we look at this triangle a E uh, what do you call that? Yeah, we look at that triangle A E D. What can we do about that triangle? What is what we can do about it? Well, what we can do about this triangle, there's a few options we can actually determine the area of that triangle right and from that area we can actually look to work out the area of this triangle because if we take the big triangle here and subtract the small triangle then we have ourselves an area of our trapezium so it makes life easy ne? So the only thing we have to sweat for, because the good thing about doing it the area style, let me show you what is the advantage. The advantage, I'm trying to get a colored pen that can do the work. So these are the questions that of course without planning are not easy, so there will, there will always be a challenge. So if you look at this vertex, if you make this the perpendicular line see this thing is refusing to write okay so this is the perpendicular line now remember this perpendicular line is basically the elevation of that point which is five units so this is already five units you don't have to calculate it we've already determined ea from above or ae so we found that this is eight units right So we only need just two things here. We already know that y coordinate g. We calculated it from that one, isn't it? So for the height of this one, maybe let's use another colored pen. So we already know the height of this little triangle here. Its height is basically the g coordinate there. So we got what? What was the values that was minus 19 over 2 is 2 5 over 2 so we know that that would be the 5 over 2 units that gives us that height okay and then now all we have to do which unfortunately we cannot run away from is to determine exactly the coordinates of f at least that becomes a bit easier because we already were told to do the gradient of gf so we only need to use one point which is either h or g to then get the equation from the equation we can get the x-intercept and from there we know we have the line so at least it's not so difficult isn't it but it's still a bit of work yeah it is a little bit of work but it's not as bad as the other one where you would have to do a humongous amount of steps to do the thing so here we just connect the dots a bit easier and a bit faster okay let's do it 
So first of all, we're going to just start haphazardly and say gf is such that y equals we found the gradient to be minus 1, isn't it? So it's going to be minus x plus c. Then we have point h. Let's use h because it's much easier. There's no fractions. Minus 8 um, is to 1. We have 1 equals minus into minus 8 plus c. Therefore, c is going to be, this becomes positive. It's going to be minus 7. Okay. So we can say, therefore, y is equal to minus x minus 7. That is for gf. We can say now f is such that point f, maybe let's say, which is x is to y, uh, is such that 0 is equal to minus, no, 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 it's y. Ah, I want to go to Kali, send him more shield. Ish, ish, ish. I want to get it done. Go. This is a new plan. Let's start over here, guys. So it means zero. We want the x-intercept is going to be minus x minus seven. All right. So obviously it's going to be seven, isn't it? Minus seven. Therefore, x is going to be minus seven. We can conclude that therefore f is the point uh, minus 7 is to 0. Why going through all this trouble? It's because this point is critical in helping us solve our equation here. Okay, so from here we can say this implies that E f is going to be equal to is going to be equal to um, x at say e minus x at f. It's a horizontal line. Okay. Now what is that? It's at e it's minus 11 minus into minus 7. This is minus 11 plus 7 which is going to be minus 4 right so which is just four units that is important because we cannot do without that so let's just create some working space here we can say therefore area of a d g f is equal to the area of a E D right triangle A E D minus the area of triangle F E G. Yane, you get back it. Palika kagu be up. Kotake, you get the message. And why do we do that? Because we know that this big area minus the small one leaves just that area, which is our interest because we don't want to sweat too much. So this is going to be equal to half the base. We're not going to start writing formula here for grade 5 or so. I mean, error of a triangle is stuff that you learn in grade 5, if I'm not mistaken. So I, I'm not going to be really happy about all of that half base times height story. We already understand if you stated it here. So what is the base of that big one? It's EA. EA is 8 units. Because someone knows when you mentioned this one and then you show up with this eight units, it shows up somewhere, right? But maybe for simplicity's sake, you may have to write the formula and then substitute. Maybe let me not be too complacent. It's going to be difficult for you guys to, 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 to ah, but I've already done it. So maybe you have to write first which sides you're choosing as heights. And then, of course, the height there is going to be five minus half the base of this one is just the four which has calculated and then its height is five over two which is the y coordinate of that vertex over there it's vertically up isn't it so let's do our thing guys we are almost in fact we are done with this one we're almost done we're almost done okay so we have 0 0,5 into 
8 into 5 minus 0, 0,5 into 4 into this is 5 over 2 I don't know why it looks funny 5 over 2 so I'm getting 15 above weight square units okay or units squared all right so that is cool that is absolutely cool all right guys so um, I hope that is clear of course you see that as much as it looked like a simple approach it still was a little bit of work okay it still was a little bit of work I don't know if, it, if there was a better way of doing it than that I don't know but at the end of the day if you have a particular plan then it usually works the magic in the room so do yourself a favor always try to have a plan and stick to it but of course of all the options you have available to you always try to look for the quicker one so for me for me it is important to get this and that okay and then i can simply say substitution here and the answer because the rest is a means to an end so you will not necessarily get you know rewarded for it but it has to show this is where all things come from so don't be lazy but with a plan you are in a better position than without okay so again when they know a question is going to be a bit annoying they don't put too much marks they will just put the standard three and then maybe add one or two but it won't really carry a lot of marks because they know there's a very good chance of not getting it right okay let's do the last question here before we lose too much time talking unnecessary stuff here all right they want the gradient of a b ah you see and look at that six marks so you see they only want the gradient not the equation but you already have a plan outlined before you even knew it i mean not every time though you're going to be that lucky but you see maintaining a bit of a work ethic it creates a bit of life for you now we are in a good position we are in a good position so we can say here fine first of all we already have an equation of that line which is the gradient is minus one so first of all we need the angle theta right so they don't know any theta they didn't put any thetas there so you need to be very careful you can say bao or you can say theta so for for me i will go this way i'll say let the angle of inclination of um say a b equals theta let it be theta all right and that of ad equals beta i'm planning my way so if things were not named i name them or you can say that is dao it's still up to you you still have an option there. you can say dao say bao it's still okay but i just like to do what i want so we want beta right so we're going to start with beta um we can say now well we know that 10 of beta is equal to the gradient of da or ad okay which is equal to minus one right therefore our beta is going to be 180 degrees minus arc 10 um, of we're just going to put one here 
let's just put one or you can put minus one then if you put minus one there then you're gonna put a plus there because it's gonna come out as a negative so whichever technique you find useful so you don't want to waste time yo the power cuts happened baba so yeah it's gonna make our video look a little bit dull anyway things like this happen isn't it so let's go for it so we have 180 plus shift 10 uh, of minus 1 okay I put it that other way but in any case you're going to get 135 degrees okay because that is 45 so it would have been minus 45 so yeah it's gonna be a bit dark guys so you'll forgive me for this one so the camera may not be in the very best let me try to open my curtains up so that at least we can see a bit better let's just let me just get out of this nightmarish position and try and get the curtains opened oh. making any difference. <laughs> it's not going to make a difference. Oh Lord, no. It's not really helping at all. It's not really helping. But, well, I tried. So before the battery dies, let's just finish this thing. Okay, we have our beta. I think it's not too bad though. It's not too bad. So we have our beta. So what do we want? We want theta. But then we can say, but what? We know that uh, D a B plus angle C equal 180 degrees okay the reason is these are the opposite angles of cyclic quad okay opposite angles of a cyclic quad that is what they gave us didn't they they did okay let's make sure this tells us that therefore DAP is going to be 180 degrees minus that 71 comma 57 degrees so let's do that one quickly 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 so 180 minus 71 um, comma 57 degrees is 108,43 degrees okay so why did I do that because I know theta plus this angle give me beta is easy like that we can say okay after all of this we know that well However, <laughs> yeah, ne? yeah, my however looks horrible. However, hi, it's never gonna get better than that. Okay, maybe let's zoom in a bit. However, I know for a fact that theta plus DAB equals speed okay that is on the sketch of course you'll have indicated those and it implies that theta is going to be what is beta now beta was 135 minus 
this one is 108,43 degrees okay <coughs> so you see we're almost done so 135 minus 108,43 gives us 26,57 degrees okay <coughs> So we are in a good position. <clears throat> we are in a good position. So what else is needed? <coughs> Sorry. What else do we need, guys? Nothing more. Nothing more. We can say here. Therefore, okay. I think once we have this one, we can say, we know that 10 of theta is going to be equal to the gradient of AB. That is just theory. That implies that 10 of 26,57 degrees is equal to the gradient of AB. Therefore, the gradient of AB is going to be whatever we find. So let's do it. 10 of 26, comma. 5, 7 is a half basically because I mean to two decimal places 0, 0,50 which is 0, 0,5 which is just a half uh, a half not 1 over 5 what am I doing okay guys so you can see here you had to do a bit of planning and a bit of work I mean you can shorten this by lessening a lot of these unnecessary steps but this is just to show you how to work your magic other than that this is how you can get these 19 marks of this question so analytical geometry this is the place to pick every mark you can get even the maybe a little bit challenging questions if you have a game plan you'll always make it all right guys um now let's continue we've got a lot of work i don't know with this power cut is it going to give us a smooth sail at all you see without power this thing becomes a bit yeah i don't know guys maybe we'll see maybe you won't i don't know you'll forgive me for that one all right so we are told here, question five, simplify the following expression to a single trigonometric ratio. Now let's just copy all of that. So this is cos of x minus one eight degrees uh, times 10 of minus x, sorry, times sine squared of 90 minus x, and then all of, all of that over sine of 180 minus x and then uh, minus 4 cos squared x okay so easy 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 these are from grade 11 guys especially when there's no double angles and compound angles you just know that you're dealing with grade 11 and you have had enough practice of these from grade 11 so there's no point in losing marks here cos of x minus 180 degrees Okay, times 10 of minus x times sine squared of 90 degrees minus x. All of that divide by sine of 180 degrees minus x. Then of course all of that minus 4 cos squared x. Okay. So you know how we deal with this one? We just go for bod mass, bomb dust. So you know that you do bod mass. And then as you continue working, you may need factorization. And then you may need identities. So these are just the three things you're going to need to solve this matter. Of course, usually almost 90% of the time, bod mass use, I mean works. Your magic. Of course, bot mass is a bracket off. Are there any brackets here? Yeah, there are brackets everywhere. So that is where you start. You remove those things. Now, this is going to be equal to 
then when we work our magic here remember uh, this is just the second quadrant so to speak so cos is negative there so I mean it's as simple as that but I would like to show you how you can do this nicely first this one you're just going to say this is cos you take up a common factor which is minus into then the 180 becomes positive then the x becomes negative and then you close it like that then you multiply I mean 10 of a negative angle 10 is negative in the fourth quadrant so that is a, an angle in the fourth quadrant so you're going to have minus 10 of x like that done then you come back here and say sine once you say 90 plus you need a core ratio but is sine positive in the first quadrant yes so its core ratio will also be positive so this is going to be the same as cos squared oops x not 90 degrees but x I don't know what happened there some mistakes like to just find their way okay so all of this is over sine of 180 minus that is the second quadrant sine is positive so we're still doing the brackets of thing there step one minus cos squared x so we can't do anything there we leave it like that and then we can say okay we we have an unfinished business here we can simplify this one further so cos of a negative angle remember you're going to consider this as theta as a whole so cos of a negative angle is positive so of cos of 180 degrees minus x times here you can be crafty already but um, yeah we can be we can be crafty here we know for a fact that this is going to be minus but 10 we can convert it by using our identities to sine of x over cos x okay this is times cos squared x okay all of that of course all of these others are divided by one as a result because now there's a fraction up there of a sine of x minus cos squared x okay so what do we do here we further reduce this by doing our bod mass there so cos of 180 minus x is minus cos of x do you see you could have just done that over there already so I mean start working these things out so much that you gain the confidence to know that once you see this it only means this okay so that you can avoid these multiple steps but for the purpose of teaching you something this is what we're going to do okay so we're going to multiply there by minus sine x over cos of x multiplied by cos squared x because these are all over 1 over sine of x minus cos squared x okay now you look can I take out any factors at this point this is when you're doing the D and M part division and multiplication the answer is definitely yes because cos x can take out cos x right right but also sine x takes out the other sine x remember these are multiplication so once you have this this is as a whole a single term you only have terms when you have separation by signs like that but when you have multiplication it's just one term so you can do all of this at once then what are we left with buff weight oh I forgot this is for H Panzenda Mosh okay this is minus 4 cos x okay so all you can see here we have cos squared x minus 4 cos x so cos squared x these are like terms now you are on the as part so what do we do here this is going to be minus 3 cos squared x and we have reduced it to a single trigonometric ratio and do you see here we literally used our board mass only here but just this identity of 10 which is sine over cos but you see 90% was essentially your board mass okay guys this is all you can do here so you get your 7 marks I mean 
very easy stuff fairly easy stuff to do okay let's look at this one now we are told here 5.2 consider cos a minus b minus cos of a plus b equals 2 sine a sine b okay now they're saying prove the identity is that true of course the most complicated is the right hand side left hand side so we can take the left hand side and see if it is equal to the right hand side all right 5.2 so they are telling us that we have cos of a minus b minus cos of a plus b all right is equal to 2 sine a sine b all right so here once they say prove we take the left hand side don't be lazy to write i know you feel like this is repeating yourself a lot now what do you do here there's nothing more you can do but to do compound angle expansion here so we get cos a cos b the sign changes to plus sine a sine b ne? that is the one so you are done with the first one and then you do the second one minus but once you have a negative you always want to treat it with caution so you first deal with this one so it's gonna be cos a cos b right then the sign changes to minus sine a sine b i don't know why i'm writing like that guys eh? sometimes namdia's mangas anyway so we have here cos a times cos b sine a sine b ne? then we distribute the negative is going to be minus cos a cos b then this one changes to plus sine a sine b as you can see this one takes care of that one then these are like terms as well so they add up together so you end up with 2 sine a sine b which is equal to the right hand side so you've proven identity so easy stuff easy stuff so i get i guess you're getting um yeah, maybe the marks are just purely for the two expansions, or maybe we can just say for the expansions a mark. And for cancelling things out and adding things out and ending up there, that is where maybe those two marks are sitting. Okay, we don't want to sit too much into this one. So that was 5.2.1. Now we're doing 5.2.2 which says hence or otherwise calculate without using a calculator the value of cos 15 degrees minus cos of 75 degrees okay so once they give you this thing in the same framework as that question it means you have to try and convert this into something like that but now these are not special angles so if they're saying not using a calculator and yet you're dealing with purely things that are not going to be easy to eliminate we have to represent this in terms of special angles but in that manner we have to create this so that we can say it is equal to that ne. yeah so this is going to be cos 15 is 45 degrees minus 30 degrees so you've used special angles so do you see we've already created that first scenario for 15 minus cos of course 75 is 45 degrees plus 30 degrees easy stuff and then do you see we've created the second scenario and then now once we see this it's always nice now because we can just say this is equal to 2 sine of 45 degrees times sine of 30 degrees from the above you don't have to explain okay so this is wonderful now so we have 2 into sine of 45 is 1 over root 2 
multiplied by sine of 30 is a half. So you know these things, right? You know them well. So this is multiplication, so that goes. Ne. Yeah. So we end up with 1 over root 2. Then you are told you have to rationalize the denominator by multiplying by 1. 1 is root 2 over 2. When you have this, you do that. So you get root 2 over 2. Okay, so never leave your denominator as irrational. Okay, um, that is the good story of this whole thing. So it was just an application of that little bit of an identity they provided you. So it just had to be scaled to create this, these angles using special angles in that manner. Then you have your answer. So they were giving us four marks here. I would believe that this is wonderful and converting that into that is wonderful and then eventually substituting those using the special angles and the answer. I think this is where those marks are sitting. Okay, let's move guys. We don't have a lot of time. I don't want to spend forever here. I want us to get to that trick graph at least before we chop this video. Okay, again, without using a calculator, determine the value of. And by the way, you can just check your answer for the previous one by just plugging those things as they are. Just say cos of 15 minus cos of 75. So you see, you're getting the same answer. So in the end, they know that there is an answer you can just get by doing the calculation using your calculator. So once you have these kinds of problems, you always check by putting that thing in the calculator just to double check that you're not with the wrong answer. And if your answer and that one in the calculator are not the same, somewhere between your calculations in your calculator or your calculations algebraically is wrong. All right, not a problem. So without using a calculator, determine the value of Okay, they're giving us fractions again. So here, remember you always have to be scaled. Sometimes don't always look for special angles. You're not in grade 11 anymore. Uh, here they will challenge you a bit. So sometimes you don't know when you need them and when you don't need them. So assess the situation as you get to it. Don't accustom yourself with just one way of getting things done. So they want us to determine this value. Again, you can plug it in your calculator to double check whether, but don't put yourself under pressure and get an answer in your calculator before you solve this thing. Solve it first, get your answer, then check it by doing it in the calculator. Otherwise, the calculator will put you under pressure and tell you the answer is that. And then you'll start to see yourself getting stuck along the way. You don't want that to happen. Now, what can we do here? I mean, there's no way we can create this either using special angles or anything, but always double check if you can convert these into some special angles of some kind. But you can tell here there's no way you can. I mean, 36 has no relationship with our special angles as 12. So we are not at liberty to go the special angle route. So is there anything we can do here? Again, I told you, when you're solving these trick expressions, you have your board mass, which will work almost 80% of the time, factorization, which will be another way you can break things so that you can work with them, and then identities. So you always look, every step you go, can you use something? If not, but this is what you want to work with. This is your workhorse. These ones are like your, your keys. Open the door, you explore it that way. This one can open a door, you explore it that way. This one opens the door, you explore it that way. So everything gravitates towards that. All right, not a problem. So here we can see there's nothing we can do but look for an LCM because there's no common denominator sign. 12 is not the same as cos of 12. So we need a common denominator, I mean, there's, I mean an LCM, a lowest common multiple, and that we get by multiplying these two. So we get here uh, sine 12 
degrees multiplied by cos 12 degrees. Then how do you deal with this one? You take this and divide by that denominator and then the cos 12 cancels out. You remain with sine 12. You multiply that to the numerator. So all you have is sine of 12 degrees cos of 36 degrees minus and then of course ah but here there's nothing you don't need to put any bracket okay so here you take this you divide by that the sine 12 cancels out you remain with cos 12 cos 12 multiplied by the numerator sorry yeah what did i say yeah man is going to be sine 36 so according to did I copy this correctly? Yes, I did. Can't you quench it? Ah, ningo, tinga kelo. Some belief though, but you who try to ham picking twin. A a a a a a a. But my problem is that something is not adding up here. Something is not adding up. That is why I'm a little bit worried. Oh yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not supposed to worry because the sign cancels out to multiply the cos there. Okay, so here we're going to have cos 12 degrees, sine 36 degrees. Yeah, yeah, better. You might say, "Palega biga cool." Ningangi shy. Now let's just clean this one up. We have sine 12 degrees multiplied by cos 36 degrees uh, minus cos 12 degrees times sine 36 degrees. All of that over sine 12 degrees cos 12 degrees all right not a problem so what do you do when you get here you're like oh hold on i have sine cos cos sine that's like a compound angle for sine and this is the first angle this is the second angle so this is the same as sine of 12 degrees ne uh, minus the sign never changes, right? The second angle, which is 36 degrees. Right, right. So you do your gymnastics as you know them. Nothing changes, although that you're dealing with angles that are a little bit cumbersome. They must not scare you or put you off. It's something you can work out. What is 12 minus 36? This is basically sine of minus 24 degrees. All over sine. 12 degrees times cos 12 degrees. All right. Now you can already tell now there's a relationship between 12 and 24. So you can, this is a double angle for sine. Of course, it's going to be minus sine of 2 times 12 degrees. Right? I'm already converting quickly because we already made too many steps now. Sine uh, 12 degrees cos 12 degrees. Now let's end this pain. What is that? That's a double angle. So this is minus 2 sine 12 degrees cos 12 degrees over sine 12 degrees cos 12 degrees. I mean, I just prolonged it so that you can follow all the way. Now this and that cancel. Okay, so what is left is minus 2. Now, you can just take this and double check that is that true. You just do your expression there, cos of 2 of 36, 36 divided by cos of 12 degrees minus a fraction of sine 36 divided by sine of 12. And if you're not getting the same answer, then you are wrong somewhere. So this is minus 2, so we know that, okay. It is done. No matter what happened, it is done. So 
you take your four marks again and you say thank you very much for such a, a lovely exercise. I hope you guys can see if the light is not the best. Eh? The light is not the best, Baba. But what can we do? What can we do? We have a country that is run by people who you wonder if they have any shame for allowing things to get to this far. But hey, they simply don't care because you know what? We let them. So consider 2 sine squared x plus sine 2x over cos 2x, okay? Equals 2 sine x over cos x minus sine x. Now, always this is going to be a proof. So I don't know how many proofs are they putting here. So yeah, they are doing a proof k law. Is a proof k law this one? 5.4. 5.4.1 so we have to prove that identity so we we'll always take the left hand side it looks more complicated than the right so this is 2 sine squared x plus sine 2x I'm just gonna copy this one at this point but you guys make sure you copy the thing as it is before you choose the side ne? please now I'm just lazy. Okay, let's work this out. Now we still have our board mass. We can factorize. We can do identities. Okay. Always follow them in that order. Start by looking if you can do your board mass or bomb does, and then see if you can factorize, see if you need any identities to simplify further. But this is your guy for the rest of this thing the others are just locks or keys now let's have a look here do we have any common I mean sine squared x is not exactly the same as sine 2x so there are no like terms at the top in fact there is not yet a common factor that we can take out we can't factorize either and we can't even do factors because I mean cos 2x is also another beast over there so all we are left with, we can't factorize, we can't do board masses yet, so we are left with doing identities. Ne? So what can we do with our identities? Fine, this one is fine as it is, 2 sine squared x plus, but sine 2x, we can break it down to 2 sine x cos x using the double angle identity for sine, divide by um so when when we get to this state here you don't want to change everything at once because it can create a few issues for you you always want to decide why you want to go that route so you want to maintain one side while you work with the other side don't work with them at once it's gonna hurt because it may be misleading remember there's a lot of possibilities here but you have a target that's why they give you a specific target it can go many other ways but you want this specific target so let's see can we do anything now yes we can we can go back to our board mass and say fine we can see that 2 is a common factor what else sine x is a common factor because there's a square there's a sine x so we know that 2 sine of x into now what remains here is uh what remains there is sine of x plus cos of x ne. divide by now you're like okay if I factorize my numerator now it compares me that look I'm going to look for something like this because I have to get a, a, an identity that looks like that so here cos 2x can be actually shown as a difference of two squares which is cos squared x minus sine squared x that's a double angle identity for cos 2x so do you see at, at times you look and see what you need so that you don't get too far off now we've used our identity which is step three here we used step two in the denominator we used step three and then of course you like what can I do can I cancel out any factors not as yet 
so I can't do anything. My bot mass is quiet. There are no like terms that I can take out and all that. So I cannot do identities either at this point. I'm done with them. So I'm left with step three, which is to factorize. Can I factorize anything here? Yes, the denominator. Sine of x plus cos of x divide by. Now here, this is a difference of two squares, so it's going to be cos x minus sine x into the other one is going to be cos of x plus sine of x. Of course, check if you can take it back. If it doesn't go back, then it's wrong, but it must go back. So this is how you factorize the difference of two squares. One bracket is positive, one bracket is negative for the same factors. Now, now you can say, well, Bodmas, can I take out any factors? Yeah, cos squared minus plus sin x plus cos x or cos x plus sin x. I mean, this is more or less the same thing, so it can go out. And what are you left with is 2 sin x divided by cos x minus sin x. Is it not what you're supposed to prove? Yes, that is the one. So you see, this is how you go about it. And yeah, this one ends here. If it becomes exactly what you wanted, it's done. If you don't get what you wanted, it's not done. That's just the idea with this one. There's no other way of proving it. Okay, guys, that is it. So again, they were giving you just four marks. Yo, yeah, ne. Hujalwa mona. Hujalwa all right, let's answer the next question. It says, um, for which value or values of x in the interval minus 90 to 180 will the identity not be valid? Again, look at this question. Similar to the question that came out in the major exams, they asked for when something was not going to be valid. Was it valid or not valid? I think they said valid there. <coughs> so they always twist and turn. So you see the power of looking at the recent papers and making sure that you understood the entire framework of that paper and in fact the generation of those answers. It gives you a bit of a, an advantage. Of course, not so much, not by a large margin, but that can make the difference between getting an A plus and just a decent mark or even a fail for that matter. So, hey. Watch out! So when will this be um, undefined? That means you cannot divide by zero. So that means your focus should be on the denominators. Do you see that question one of paper one, where they can ask you about when some expression or some function is not defined or defined? It is the same thing here. So you just need to know where to look. Don't look everywhere else, but know where to look. So that means this must be zero or that one must be zero because that means one of the sides are going to be undefined and as a result they will not be equal to each other. Okay, so it means here 5.4.2 this means either cos 2x is equal to zero or cos x minus sine x is equal to zero, okay? Can be one of the two, but at the end of the day, we have to consider both because we have an equation. <laughs> we don't just have an expression. If it was just one single expression, we'll just choose one side, whichever that side was provided. But when it's an equation, you have to consider both sides because you have those denominators on either side. <laughs> then, of course, you do your magic here. You can say 2x is going to be equal to arc cos, in fact, plus or minus arc cos um, of zero. Of course, this is general solutions first, plus k times 360 degrees, or when you deal with this one, you have to transpose cos x equals to sine of x, ne? and then you divide by cos x, divide by cos x, then that must go, so you have, this is 10 is equal to 1 and then it means your x 
is going to be just arc 10 of 1. Ne. Of course, plus k times 180 degrees. For 10, it's 180. Ne. And then you'll state that k is an element of integers, isn't it? And then we solve here and say, fine, this means 2x is equal to plus or minus cos of 0 is 90 degrees plus k times 360 degrees or x is equal to what is 10 of 1 is 45 180 degrees and then you can of course state that this must be an element of integers I'm, I'm running out of space here and then what do you do here you divide by 2 you can make your conclusion and say therefore x is going to be plus or minus 90 divided by 2 is 45 degrees plus k times oops 360 by 2 is 180 as well so that is 180 degrees so do you need this one it's already positive it's captured this so this is it then you can just say where k is an element of integers but now they gave you uh, they want x values we can say therefore x is an element of you want that set of x values you're using general solutions to get to the values i think they asked it in the same manner in the major exams all right so what do you do here they've given you a range of minus 90 to 180 so what what is the next one i mean you can make k zero here so when this is negative so minus 45 degrees is going to be a part of it great and then what is the next one when k is zero and then that is plus is going to be a 45 degrees ne? and then of course the next one is you put one here if you put one here the one that has a positive it already overrides 180 it goes beyond 180 so that is out but the negative one gives us 135 ne? and then of course that's it there's nothing more you can do but then remember when you have a situation like this don't be excited you got to the answer I don't know why they gave this one two marks because it's ridiculous believe me it's not something worth two marks I mean look at the amount of work you have to do you have to double check these things if you look back here you put these values here you put them there I mean you know that cos of 2x for example cos of 90 when you put 45 here 45 by 2 is 90 cos of 90 is 0 so already that is undefined no questions about it and then of course here cos of um, 45 for example is root 2 over 2 sine of 45 is root 2 over 2 and that is 0 effectively then let's look at minus 45 and minus whatever again you're going to get the same thing which is going to give us 0 so 45 takes the box and minus 45 takes the box but 135 works here because this is going to be cos of 270 which gives us 0 right right let me just double check cos of 270 yeah is 0 so that one checks but here we have a problem cos of 27 uh, sorry 135 minus sine remember all of these things sine is positive this is negative so the issue is that now you're going to have a minus and a minus so you're going to end up with an addition instead of a subtraction that gives you zero so that doesn't hold because it gives us a minus root 2 so that means we have to rule out this one so we can say this one is invalid I don't know if you can get a mark for ruling it out but it is within the domain of course but you can see that this solution doesn't satisfy both equations it only satisfies one while the other one is not satisfied so it is invalid but these two satisfy both so they are both valid so I guess those are the two marks you are getting but yeah the way you, you work them out is a bit extensive is a bit extensive okay guys let's just keep going 
So the trigonometry is the algebra of your paper too. Ne? Please remember that. So algebraic techniques work here. But in a geometric sense, of course, a line is drawn from A, which is cos theta, sine theta to B, which is 6, 7. And then they're saying if AB is root 86, determine the value of 10 of theta. Okay. Now, you can think about it this way and say, fine, if you have what we call a standard circle, the standard circle has a radius of 1 to get to point A. Because for us to even have that expression like that, those coordinates, because you know that here you will have your x and your y, and you have your theta here, okay? Of course, we're saying this is going to point B over there, which now is 6 and 7, right? That is also 90 degrees, so that means this is 6, and that reads across to 7. But remember, theta is any angle. No one said theta is an angle in this domain. So they didn't give us a domain. So this one may be misleading because, I mean, from this, it doesn't really matter whether this distance is root 86 or 18. And then that is 1. But you know that here, 10 of theta is going to be equal to opposite of adjacent. So it's going to be 7 over 6. Right, right. So that's what you're going to get. But what about other possibilities that theta is an angle there? And maybe it's doing that too, whichever B is, say this is it. What about theta is actually a reflex angle, is over there, and then that stretches to some B over there. So I mean, you see, it can get complicated. What about theta is here? Because theta is a hypothetical angle, and nobody said anything about where it is. So the safest is to use the distance formula here because this one is going to be misleading. So we know that the distance between any two points, so we're going to use a bit of analytical geometry here because they've already told us the value of the distance. And we know that we can try and work it out algebraically and see what we get. So we know that AB is equal to root 18. Right, they're telling us that. and. This follows that we can square this. Say, therefore, AB squared is going to be equal to 18. I mean, if you square one side, what you do on the left-hand side, you must do on the right-hand side so that you equate the situations. And then what is AB squared? It's going to be x at... Um, okay, let's just say x at A minus x at b to avoid a few problems or squared plus y at a minus y at b or squared is going to be 18 and then this implies that now we can substitute what was the x at a x at a is cos theta minus what is the x coordinate at b is 6 or squared plus y at a is sine theta minus 7 or squared equals 18 okay then we continue we expand this algebraically we're gonna get cos squared theta right minus 12 cos theta right Right, and then plus 6 squared is 36. Then plus, we deal with this one, is going to give us sine squared theta minus 14 sine theta. Right, and then plus 49. Okay, equals 18. So we are sorted here. So what do we do now? Well, we will do our gymnastics, right? We've already started them. Now we can tell that, well, sine squared theta and cos squared theta gives us one. Right, right. So what are we left with? We are left with, um, 
we are left with minus 12 cos theta minus 14 sine theta and then of course we have 36 here plus 49 and then plus the one of cos squared theta plus sine squared theta those are like terms right they give us one from our identities so plus one it gives me 86 nah. let me just double check again 36 plus 49 plus 1 it's 86 equals 18 and then obvious obvious hey uh, and as 18 in tibene pinaiti klawam di ashanya ne this is 86 hey when hey 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 yo I, I loved this 18 buffer weight. So that is 86. I'm sorry for the mess. I, I'm tired now. I'm really tired, but I'm going to keep going. There's no excuses to be made here. Of course, these are the same size, so they cancel out. Thank you very much. I was starting to see a problem. That's why I double-checked. See, sometimes when you see that, hey, something is not going the way it should, at least. All right, so now what you can do here, we can say minus 12 cos theta is equal to 14 sine theta. Why am I transposing? Because I'm trying to get a 10 identity with the same angle. So therefore, that is what 14 10 of theta is going to be equal to minus 1. No, 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 minus 12. What am I doing? What am I doing? Okay, so what is the story there? So the story is... Um, mm, mm. So the story there so is that we divide by 14. So what do we get? We get our 10... Theta is what? 6 to 12 goes how many? I mean, 2 to 12 goes 6 times. 2 to 14 goes 7 times. So do you see our sign is negative here? Uh, and look at this. It's already skewed as well. I mean, if we looked at it that way, <laughs> you see it sounds very okay to say opposite over adjacent like that but it's dangerous ne? because look at our answer now it's the other way around it's minus six over seven anyway you are comfortable with all of this work so none of it actually matters that much to you guys you know how to work your magic in the room and and you can succeed anyway anyway all right guys so that's it so i think algebraic solution here is much better and safer than to try and do the sketch but sometimes the sketch can work if they gave you the constraints in which this is happening the sketch actually solves all of this unnecessary pain but you can tell here you had to walk a mile it's six marks boss so a lot of marks. So how many marks were in this paper here? 28. Yeah. Yeah, Vagal. Yeah, Vagal. Yeah, we can feel it. There was a lot of marks in this question and it was quite a walk on its own. All right, guys. So let's get to the graph. Maybe we can stop there. Uh, yeah, we can stop there. I... Nicarele Suezui. Nelaba Guentela. All right. Uh, let me just get a nice pen to work with. Because we don't want a situation. My black pen is already giving up. Okay, guys. So, yeah.
we are upon this question seven. I don't know if you can read properly there, but yeah, sometimes I doubt this camera, but it actually does a better job than I take it for. Question seven reads, in the diagram below, the functions f of x equals minus sine x. Not sine x, but sine of x plus 30 degrees. And g of x equals 2 cos x are drawn in the interval minus 180 is to 180. And then they are saying a is an x-intercept of f and c and d are the end points of the graphs of f and g at 180. So they are giving you a clue that this is happening at 180. So let's just capture that nicely. So that is the story so and then of course that is an x-intercept but let's explore these functions what happened here the coefficient of the function is negative and normally it is positive and what is the amplitude is one so this means we flipped this about the x-axis because we multiply the entire function by negative right because when you're doing a vertical reflection you multiply the entire function by minus one as opposed to just a horizontal where you deal with only the x values. Ne. That is good. That is good. So a reflection is a flip as opposed to a shift. Okay. Good. So we know that fine. Our sine graph was supposed to look like this. Ne. That is how it should look okay but now when we do this flip it looks something like that uh, yeah it, it reverses so you just flip that thing like that so it's going to come out like this so it ends at the bottom and ends at the top on the other side so this is what we expect to see on our sine graph okay but of course this is passing through the origin but now what what happened we shifted it to the left 30 degrees so that means what was supposed to happen at zero is going to happen at minus 30 so that means this intercept is no longer going to be there so i'm just going to try and work with this just for fun guys so this means uh, we're going to have a situation where everything is shifted 30 degrees that way. So what is our graph going to look like? Remember, it comes down like that. Then it will cut and do its thing there. Why is my wave not looking complete now, eh? Yeah, ne. yeah, I messed up. This one was not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be stretched somewhere here. Yeah. Okay. Not a problem, but you get the idea. I'm getting lost in my own inventions at the moment. Okay, it's not my own inventions, but yeah, somebody else's inventions. But you see, this is what happened to the sine graph. Instead of seeing that intercept there, it's going to happen a bit earlier which is 30 degrees earlier than zero. So are we seeing what we expect? Yeah, so this literally tells us that A is minus 30 degrees already from just understanding what we saw happened. And we know this is the sine graph, it flips. And then of course, where do the maximums and minimums go? To minus one. So we don't care where the turning point is at this point but all we know is that this is minus one and it goes up to one on the maxima so the maxima and the minima they go up to one and minus one all right because that is the amplitude that tells us what we need to do okay is there more we want to explore yeah well we know that usually the the asymptote, sorry, the maximum for a sine graph must be at uh, 90 degrees. Ne? But now where is it? 
because of that left shift it must happen 30 degrees earlier what is 30 degrees earlier is going to be 60 degrees so we know that our turning point is so is going to be at 60 degrees but of course this is reflected now so it's not going to look exactly like that but all you know is that okay this is going to be 60 degrees because we're just going to say when you're shifting to the left as much as there's a plus in there but from critical values you say 90 minus 30 it lends you to 60 and that's where you're going to get your maximum and then what about here what happens this is supposed to happen at minus 19 eh? so you're just going to say minus 90 minus you know minus 30 degrees it becomes minus what uh, minus 90 minus 30 is what 120 minus 120 degrees so you see if you know these things guys there's no way you're going to suffer you're just not going to suffer you're just going to win and win big you see you've worked out a lot of things already for one function before you even answered any questions about it you understand guys. you understand I hope you do because if you don't Please raise up your hand in the comments section and ask, how do you know these things? Yes, I will tell you how. Now, let me just give you a brief introduction of the sine graph so that you understand just the normal sine graph so that you know what happened here. Now, know the critical values. It's zero, which is the origin. And it's going to be the scale of 90s. It goes in 90s, 90. 180, uh, another 180, there is 270, sorry, another 90 is 270, and then go to 360. And then the same way, on the other hand, it's going to be 90 minus 90. Of course, these are degrees, but I sh my situation is a bit horrible right now. So it's minus 180 degrees minus 270 degrees and then minus 360 degrees okay that is how your sine graph is going to go normally so this is minus 1 that is 1 now let's do the drawing so that we can show what it looks like I know now the critical points I know that it is turning at 90 it is cutting at 180 it is turning on a minimum at 270 and it's completing its own thing there, a cycle. And then, of course, it's going to cut at zero. It's going to be at minimum at minus 90. It's cutting at minus 180. It's maximum at minus 270. And it rests there. So these are the critical points. So if you know these critical points off by heart, you're not going to struggle to work out these graphs whenever they shift them or not shift them so this is how your sine graph should look normally even for cos I'm just going to overlie cos here because it uses the same critical values so as a result the cos graph you know that for cos though it starts at a maximum at 0 it cuts at 90 it is minimum at minus 180 it cuts at 270 it sits at a maximum at um, 360 right and then what happens it will cut at 90 it will turn on its minimum at minus 180 and then it cuts at 270 and then it goes to its max like that so if you remember these things guys trust me don't worry about the 60 degrees, the 30 degrees, and all those things. They don't matter. So do you see? This is how these graphs look. And in fact, if you were to shift sine 90 degrees to the left, it becomes a cos graph. If you shift cos graph 90 degrees to the right, it becomes a sine graph. Can you see that? That's why there are cos functions in the first quadrant. Once you say 90 plus, 90 minus, you know that these two will interchange because these are essentially the same graph but shifted about. So you master those critical values for cos and sine. You are SWAT. You are SWAT.
okay not swat but swatted you are swatted okay guys hey my battery is going to die and i have not answered anything i'm busy talking nonsense here my battery is actually dying faster than i expected all right guys before we waste too much time let's just look into this quickly and get out of here now what do we need uh, what we need is to work out this one of course here is just the normal cost graph but the amplitude is two so it tells us that here we are at two and then of course these minima are at minus two i thought i had a bit of time i don't know why it went so quickly so minus two and of course that one as well is doing the same all right so not a problem and we know that this happens at 180 and minus 180 so we are good all right guys hey, 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 hey. i did notice that we are losing time so now we're ready to answer some questions right right now they're saying calculate the coordinates of a okay not a problem so let's deal with this one 7.1 7.1.1 what i have here is that for x intercept it implies that y is equal to zero then which function are we using here the sine graph so it's going to be zero equals minus sine of x plus 30 degrees okay not a problem we just transpose that thing to that side so we get x sorry sine of x plus 30 degrees is equal to zero we just transposed it there and we left zero and then we say therefore x plus 30 degrees is equal to arc sine of zero and arc sine of zero is actually zero so x plus 30 degrees is equal to zero therefore x is minus 30 degrees all right but that would not be quite true because you know that you would have to consider 180 minus as well nah. you would have to think about that as well some way because at 180 you know that the sine graph is cutting nah. as you saw when we did the sketches so that would also include 180 but we're not going to worry ourselves about that we're just going to focus on this one Therefore, our A is minus 30 degrees is to zero. That is done. Okay, guys. I'm not going to start wasting time on marks now, 1.2, because I think time is really chasing us out. Now they're saying the distance CD. Okay, CD. So it's this function at C and that one at D. So I mean it's a vertical line. So we know that CD is going to be the f function so it's f at 180 degrees minus g at 180 degrees because they told us it's the end point so this is essentially minus sine of 180 degrees plus 30 degrees minus 2 cos 180 degrees so you just put it in your calculator and not stress about unnecessary stuff here so we have minus into sine of 180 degrees plus 30 ne. and then we're going to subtract 2 into cos uh, 180 degrees ne. And then what I'm getting here is 5 over 2 units. You don't want to stress yourself here and do all these unnecessary little calculations and working things out. All you need to know is just to substitute into the correct formula and walk away with the marks. That is the most important thing. You don't want issues here. Okay, so let's continue. 7.2. 7.2 says write down the period of G. What is G? Is cos. Is there a multiple there? Before the X? No, there's no multiple. So at the end of the day, the period will be completed at the right moment. 
which is 360 and you can tell here this is a half cycle the other cycle does that okay becomes an open cup or dish so we can just say that T is going to be 360 degrees which is the normal one nothing changes because the angle there is not multiplied with anything now determine the general solution of the equation cos 2 cos x plus sine of the don equals to 0 6 marks of course general solutions is something that we've already done in the previous question so it's not a big deal we can do it because it gives us the intersections all right 7.3 let's rush through that one 2 cos x plus sine x plus 30 degrees equal to 0 so all we did here we just moved it this is essentially where they are equal when you move it to the left it forms this nice equation so all we have to do here is to say 2 cos x plus we expand that thing becomes sine x cos 30 degrees plus cos 30 degrees sine of x equal to 0 and then which also implies 2 cos x and then what is that cos of 30 is root 3 over 2 sine of x then uh, I repeated stuff here this is 30 degrees this is x ish yeah so plus and then sine 30 is a half cos x equals to 0 well 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 so what do we do here well the easiest is to multiply by 2 which is our common denominator when it's like this you just multiply throughout so we get 4 cos x plus root 3 sine x plus cos x equals to 0 then we are happy now because these are like temp maybe we should have handled them first but it doesn't really matter this one is going to give us 5 cos x plus root 3 sine x equal to 0 and then what do we do here uh, we can transpose cos uh, we can have here root 3 sine x equals minus 5 cos x then we divide by cos x that one goes because we want the 10 identity then we have root 3 tan x equals minus 5 I'm moving quick guys because hey time is against me now so therefore tan of x is going to be minus 5 over root 3 therefore we want x x is going to be equal to arc 10 of minus 5 over root 3 plus k times 180 degrees right where k is an element of integers they said general solution so we're going to stop at that so for 10 is as easy as just leaving it at what you get so I'm not going to do the fancy stuff of where is 10 negative and all it doesn't really matter because 180 captures that it repeats every 180 so I have shift 10 of um, minus 5 over I when I'm on some trailer so we did trailer 5 over root 3 and then so I'm getting minus 70 comma 89 degrees plus K times 180 degrees where K is an element of integers and that's the answer because they said general solution of course the equivalent to this angle here 10 is negative in the fourth quadrant and in the second quadrant so you can actually this is an angle in the fourth quadrant remember a negative angle is in the fourth quadrant but if you swing it to the first quadrant you're just going to add 180 there so you can get a 109 so it doesn't really matter I'm not gonna look at those two solutions it doesn't really make a difference for 10 but for sine yeah you want to do that but for course it's just plus or minus that angle 
so there's a bit of an easy way so again this is how you take those six marks let's do the last one before time runs out 7.4 says um, for which values or so for which values of x in the interval minus 180 is 2180 well 2 cos x plus 20 plus sine x plus 50 be greater than 0 hmm now, what is that question trying to establish? If you look at this, this is 2 cos of x plus 20 degrees, right, right, plus sine of x plus 30 degrees plus 20 degrees, ne, greater than 0. So what happened here? That means we shifted both these functions by 20 degrees to the left. So these are essentially the very same functions but shifted 20 degrees to the left. So the key is where are these graphs equal? Because then we can see what is happening. In effect, there are two ways of solving this thing. You can either think of it this way by transposing this one to the other side and say when is 2 cos of x plus 20 degrees of course that is where they are equal and then you shift that 20 degrees uh, to the left and then of course that you transpose that greater than minus sine of x plus 30 degrees plus 20 degrees ne. so you can think of it this way then it becomes easier because you first look where are they equal they are equal here and there and then we already established from our general solutions that this is going to be exactly at minus 70. So this is minus 70 comma uh, 89 degrees because I mean if you make k0 that is what you get it's one solution and then the other one is that one in the second quadrant which is going to be here it's 109 comma what did I get again? Uh, 180 minus 70 comma 89 yeah it's comma 1 1 degree so those are the values that you would get in this interval this is where these graphs are equal so I know this from this general solution that we calculated above all right so now when is the graph of G above the graph of F it's in this between these two points because you can see that this graph of G is definitely above the graph of this one so all we do here we just simply move this point 20 degrees to the left and then we also move that point 20 degrees to the left so what do we end up doing here we can say therefore our X must be less than because here they are equal so if you ever say we don't want where they are equal we want where the other one is bigger than the rest because I mean from here down G is less that one is bigger G is less that one is bigger so what where G is bigger than the other one so less than this is going to be our 109 comma 11 minus remember when you're moving to the left we literally subtract that 20 degrees and then here we're going to have oops maybe let's not do it there uh, that one is going to be minus 70 comma 89 minus 20 degrees therefore our x must be less than uh, what is that going to be 109 comma 11 minus 20 is giving us 89 comma 11 degrees but must be greater than this one is minus 70 comma 89 minus 20 this is going to be equal to minus 90 comma 89 degrees so that is done you are sorted you are like okay this is very easy so I mean it's a bit of a challenge but not too bad a challenge because you just have to realize what happened and you, you manipulate this the best way you can but here's the last way you can think about it directly let me just write it here so if you have this situation how would you create this to look like that 
so that it carries that negative so that you can just look at this expression as it is well the way you would do it is going to be to say 2 cos of cos x plus 20 degrees but remember for us to have a plus it means we had a minus into minus ne sine of x plus 30 degrees plus that 20 degrees I'm just expanding that so that you can see greater than 0 this is how it happened and then when you simplify it you ended up with this plus once you simplify this two you end up with that plus so you can also think about it this way that actually I'm taking this one and subtracting that one so I'm taking y values of this function and subtracting the y values of that and then of course these are shifted some 20 degrees to the left okay and then when you do that you're going to see exactly the same thing because when would I get a bigger subtraction between these two it happens here because I mean this one carries positive values this one carries negative values and you can tell that this one only goes to a minimum of minus one while this one goes to maximum of two so usually the distances here are going to be much greater I mean you're going to get this y value here minus this y value here remember this is going to be uh, a positive minus a negative so it's going to be minus minus going to be a plus so all of that is going to give you positive values positive values as you go but here they are equal so it's going to be another story but then you just know that these points are going to shift 20 degrees to the left and that's all that's all that changes because everywhere else this one becomes a bigger negative and that one is a positive so a negative minus a positive it becomes a negative answer so a negative answer is not what we want we want a positive answer so you see you can think of it this way always try to simplify it in the way that makes sense so that you can use your graph effectively all right guys i hope you enjoyed the video and you're going to give it that thumbs up and share it with your friends and then of course if there's any queries please comment in the description i mean sorry in the comment section and in the description you'll find um my contacts there so you can send me whatever correspondence you may have either on these videos or something else that you need assistance with other than that guys keep practicing keep working hard you're almost there thank you bye bye